What's up guys? What's up guys? What? Oh my god, Final Cut, leave me alone. What's up guys? <coughs> What's up guys? I'm having trouble starting this video. What's up guys? What's up guys? What's up guys? What's up guys? What is up you guys? What's up guys? What's up guys? <sighs> Today we are doing a Faves, Fails, and Finds. It is Friday. Happy freaking Friday. This week is gonna be extra random though. Um, also my teeth are still weird. Only three more days in my life until they are not weird again. If you are not sure of the context of what I'm talking about, watch Saturday's video. So let's talk beauty here first. I want to talk about this. This is the Health and Beauty Aztec Secret Indian Healing Clay, World's Most Powerful Facial Deep Pore Cleansing, 100% Natural Calcium Bentonite Clay. This is literally a tub of clay that you buy on Amazon and it's very inexpensive and my sister messaged me like out of the blue and she was like, you must buy this. And I was like, okay, like what for? She's like, it will make your pores so snatched. And I was like, okay. She's got not acne problems. I have acne problems. We're very, very different. I will put a picture of her. She's also like, I don't know, she's an ex-influencer. She kind of got into the blogging space like a long time ago and was one of the like OGs and now she's like moved on. Anyway, she and I are both, I mean, we're 100% related, but we got different ends of the gene pool. And so she has this very oily skin that's prone to big pores. And then I've got this super dry skin that just breaks out all the time and I'm really sensitive. Still, this is such a cheap grill. And you are supposed to either mix it with water or apple cider vinegar. I don't have any apple cider vinegar lying around. I know I'm a terrible hippie. I just mixed it with water and you guys, my pores, are so snatched after this, it's crazy. And I wake up to such prettier skin and this whole nonsense area that you guys saw in the last video that the makeup I was trying like did not cover well enough. I don't love this. It has been calmed so much by using this and then some other skincare stuff that I'm gonna share with you guys in a second. But I think that for those of you who are struggling with those kinds of things like kind of clogged pores, blackheads, maybe bigger pores and just general balance of your skin. This is actually a really, really good option, especially for the price. So um, I'm really liking this. Something stuck to my face as usual. So this looks familiar, right? You would say that that looks like the little case for the littles from Drunk Elephant. So Drunk Elephant reached out to me a few weeks ago and they were like, hey, uh, can we send you some goodies? And I was like, hell yeah. <laughs> Thank you, Drug Elephant. So they sent me this, and at first I was a little disappointed. I like messaged their social media person, and I was like, I already bought the littles. And they're like, this one's different. And I was like, what? And it is, you guys. There are a handful of them that are similar in here, but there are also a few that are different, and that is what I want to talk about today. So um, it does come with the like the virgin marula oil, it comes with the glycolic, it comes with the uh, vitamin C serum, the day serum, and a um, couple other, oh, the eye serum. The two items that I really wanna talk about today are this right here, which is, oh yes, guys, they finally put the proteiny polypeptide cream in the littles. So you get a little jar of it, and thank you, Leanne, it is everything it was ever cracked up to be in my life. It is a moisturizer that I wouldn't say is the most quenching moisturizer in the world, but it's very balancing. And it also snatches my pores. It really calms everything. Let me read what it's supposed to do. So the old one comes with the Lala Retro Whipped Cream, which I also love. This is uh, the Proteiny. This breakthrough protein moisturizer combines an unprecedented array and concentration of signal peptides growth factors, supportive amino acids, and pygmy water lily for visible and immediate improvement in the appearance of skin's tone, texture, and firmness. Proteiny's proprietary formula restores younger, revived-looking skin almost from the first application. Lines, wrinkles, and signs of sun damage appear reduced and skin feels strengthened and moisturized. You guys, I have been able to take my crazy skincare routine that was like 10 products long. You guys watched it. It's literally called my ridiculous skincare routine and I've whittled it down to a couple of products, and this is one of them. So I still start with the Tatcha, the oil cleanser, and then I go with my Milky Jelly Cleanser. I mean, no shade on the Drunk Elephant Jelly Cleanser, but I just, I love my Glossier so much, and it agrees with my skin. 
But then I go with Curology, which is just for my acne. And then I go with this. And you guys, this, sometimes I'll use their little glycolic. And then some, I just bit my tongue. And then sometimes I will use like an oil on top of it or something. But guys, like this really encapsulates so many of the things that I need for my skin. And I wake up and everything is like bright and plump. And I don't have to put like 8 million things on my face. So like simplicity. And as Drunk Elephant's products go, this one is not the most crazy expensive. It's not cheap, but it's not the most crazy expensive. And I think I'm going to definitely spring for the full size on this because I'm super impressed with it. And the other thing <laughs> that's in this version of the Littles, I have put it somewhere. When things are in heavy rotation for me, they tend to end up downstairs in my house and they don't, I don't know. Anyway, I will put a picture of it on the screen. It is their version of the sunscreen that has a tint to it. And it's a very tan tint. I think that people with deeper skin tones could wear it and it wouldn't be opaque or ashy and it would just blend in. You probably wouldn't even notice the tint. It might just have a little bit of like a blurring effect. But on me, if I have a spray tan, it makes my face match my body. Like it's just subtle enough that it's not like I have some kind of foundation line, but I can blend it pretty much everywhere that I would put sunscreen. Over my face, down my neck, and on my chest. And it is like this beautiful wash of tan. And for mm, your girl <laughs> who doesn't want to necessarily always wear uh, a lot of contour or a lot of bronzer or wear a darker foundation to compensate for how pale my skin is sometimes, it's just a lot of work. And there's something really nice about being able to put your sunscreen on. And it also has an amazing, flattering, warm, healthy looking glow to it. So uh, I highly recommend that. And those are the two big differences if you're already familiar with the old littles that's what's kind of the difference with the new littles and I love them I highly recommend the new littles and thank you to drunk elephant for sending me some free product <laughs> okay next is kind of an update so we talked about good molecules a couple of weeks ago at I think the last phase that I did and you guys, Nils commented on that. He was like, hi, I hope you like Good Molecules. I was like, hi, Nils. He's the owner of Beautylish, if you don't know. I was just like, dang, hi. So I have here the overnight exfoliating treatment. And I like this, but I don't feel like it's really intelligent enough that I want to put it on my face because it just kind of feels like a very simple, like a, I don't know, like a broad brush. I need a little bit more precision on my face, if that makes sense. But I had this idea. I was texting Hallie and I was like... So what if I took a really inexpensive skincare product that has really good, strong, active ingredients in it, and I mixed it with my moisturizer or my body oil? So we talked about this a couple weeks ago too. This is the Pharmaesthetics Midnight Honey Bath and Beauty Oil. This is what I've been using as soon as I get out of the shower or the bath to keep my skin really soft and supple in this nasty winter dryness. And you guys, I just was noticing that my legs were so dry, like so dry, like they looked like 20 years older than me, you know, and I'm breaking out on my back. It's getting better, but I was just trying to accelerate it getting better. And I thought, why don't I mix these two things together and make skincare for my body? Like, why doesn't anybody put active ingredients, acids, chemical exfoliants in body products? Am I exposing like a million dollar idea right now? I don't know, but take this, mix it with this when you get out of the shower. And you guys, it's like a gentle exfoliant for your body. And my legs are so much happier for it. My back is so much happier for it. I can feel it. It definitely is active. You know, if I've like just shaved my legs or if I kind of exfoliated on my back while I was in the shower, I can feel the active ingredients kind of going to work, not in a painful way, but just like a oh, that's not the same kind of way. And I have definitely noticed a difference. I feel like most of the time, the biggest issue with keeping my skin hydrated is getting that top layer off and actually letting the moisture get to the skin that counts, I guess. And this has really helped with that because I am just not a big fan of scrubbing. Have you guys tried dry brushing though? Honestly, the thought of dry brushing gives me goosebumps because just the idea of a it like makes my teeth hurt just thinking about it. I don't know. It just, ugh, ooh, ugh, I don't know. But maybe the brush is softer than I think it is. Like, let me know if that's something that you guys do and have seen positive effects from. I'm not really sure. But, you know, dry brushing seems to be this like Gwyneth Paltrow, very hippie thing to do, which sounds right up my alley. So why not? 
I don't know. Let me know. Okay, another thing here. You guys know, <laughs> I've been on a journey, okay? I love my journeys, but the one that we're going to talk about today is my natural deodorant journey. You guys know, Myro was a huge fail. Like, this is... Mm. Actually, you guys might not know that. I mentioned this in a video that I was starting to use this. Y'all, no. Like, that ain't it. It doesn't work. It makes me super stinky, like really stinky. And when I say that I'm on a journey to find a natural deodorant, it's not like I'm tempted if I don't find one to go back to a regular aluminum-based store counter whatever deodorant. No, I've never found a deodorant that works for me. I have always gone back to just not wearing deodorant because to be honest, being stinky is better than being like the kind of weird funky stinky that happens to me when I wear a deodorant and still get VO. And most of the time if I'm eating pretty clean, I don't get VO. It's more of like a skin on skin contact thing that happens to me in the summertime or if I'm nervous. That's totally true what they put in that commercial, by the way, where they're like stress sweat smells worse than regular sweat, 150%. Like I don't really smell when I get done from a run, but when I get off of work, I stink. And so it's like, I don't really care if I smell after I run, like that's the point. Smelling at work is a problem. And that smelled like, the Myro smelled like stinky gym boy. I would say that the front runner previous to this was actually Lumi. I like the Lumi deodorant, but I was using the cream and that's like not ideal. I don't know. I don't know why I ordered the cream. I think it was an accident. The Ursa Major one is okay. It does okay, but it doesn't, it doesn't stand up to stress sweat as well as I would like. So a few of you guys recommended this and I was in Target yesterday. I was actually looking for Burt's Bees foundation to try and they didn't have it. They only had the powder foundation and your girl doesn't do powder foundation, but I found this. This is the native deodorant paraben and aluminum free in the scent eucalyptus and mint. So I started smelling them all on the display and this was on the second shelf and I was like, yes. <laughs> like, I love this smell. It's a little bit boy, but it's so not musky and not offensive. It doesn't really have any like cloying base notes, like an Abercrombie or something. Like it just is, it's delightful. However, the first one that I smelled was the coconut vanilla and a man walking by actually saw me go, I'm really animated when I'm by myself. Like I talk to myself, I react in real time to everything. Like I am my own best friend and so, um, we have conversations all the time, me and myself, and we did not like coconut and vanilla. I decided to get this one and I'm wearing it right now. And I smell a little bit. <laughs> the jury's still out, but I just want you guys to know that this is a huge struggle for me. I, I mean, this is doing pretty well and I love the smell of it, but I'm wearing something that's very skin on skin right now. It's doing pretty well. When I film, I do get nervous, and it, so I think that I do get some stress sweat while I'm filming, but this is doing better than a lot of them that I've tried. Like, the Myro was just such a quick fail. Like, I was just like, oh, hell no. But this is doing as well as, like, the Lumi right now. And uh, I know that a lot of you guys kind of recommended that I try this. So I want you to know, I listen, <laughs> and I am trying it. Okay, the next thing, this is, again, I I'm telling you guys, this is a really random favorite. Um, I have kept my Roxbox for way too long this time. I still subscribe to Roxbox. I'm still obsessed with Roxbox. I love getting jewelry in the mail because I am never gonna shop for jewelry. I'm just not going to, I can't make decisions. And so when someone sends me three things that are like custom picked for me, I'm like, yeah, that's a decision process that I can do. I'm not completely overwhelmed and I usually like all of them or at least two of them, but you guys, this is my absolute fave. I should zoom this in, huh? Okay, so it is this serpent bracelet and it's gold and I have been really into like vintagey kind of aesthetic, especially with jewelry lately, but low key you guys, I suck at vintage shopping and I kind of hate it. And it's so funny because I'm in Austin in Austin, we have amazing vintage stores and it's all really beautifully curated. But for some reason, I don't know why, I just walk in and I'm like completely overwhelmed. And I think it's because I hate trying things on and you have to try everything on vintage shopping wise. And I just kind of get 
But even with jewelry, I'm like totally overwhelmed. Like they'll have just everything kind of organized in an aesthetic and I feel like I'm not cool enough to ask the store person to open something up and try it. I don't know. And so I just love the, <laughs> that's terrible. I'm such a millennial. I'm just like, I don't want to talk to people. Just send it to me in the mail. But this is giving me this really great vibe for stacking. And so I will wear a watch that kind of keeps this from like moving around on my arm. And then I will put this on. And so you kind of open it up a little bit and you put it on. And you close it. The only reason that I haven't bought this yet is because it's out of stock. And I don't want this particular one because it's obviously been worn a lot. And so with Roxbox, it's usually not an issue. I've done this before where I've been like, hey, I really like this item, but it's damaged. And they'll just, they'll just send you another one. But this one's like super out of stock right now. And so I'm just like holding on to it for dear life. I don't actually own this yet. But yeah, it's got like a lot of wear uh, where you can kind of see the gold coming off of it, which isn't that big of a deal, but it's like, I want to be the person who puts that wear on it. I don't want someone else's wear. So yeah, I'm obsessed with this. And um, also I'm not sponsored, but I am uh, an affiliate for Roxbox. So you can get uh, of your first month free on Roxbox with my link down below. I think I have a link down below still. Roxbox is one of like the funnest things that I do I, during the month. I don't get a lot of subscription boxes, but Roxbox is the one that's really consistently great. And then I also got all of these brushes from a uh, brand called Makeup of the Day. They sent this to my PO box. I think I'm going to put these in the big giveaway for you guys because they're super soft, but I like don't want to use, I have plenty of brushes. So I think I will throw these in a giveaway for you guys. So let's just continue descending into the weirdness here. I have been trying to shop more consciously, not just consciously of not pulling my credit card out every time I think something's cute because I do find that that's a crutch for me. Getting something new is thrilling. I try and temper that because A, I need to save money for life in general and I love looking at my credit card bill and it being really low every month. Like that's just a really good feeling. But also, you know, I just don't want to give money to all of these companies that have really poor ethical standards. And I totally understand that you're giving jobs to people in those countries. So there's something to be said for it in the sense of, you know, pulling people out of poverty. But I just think that there's more that we can do. And even if I do shop someplace like that, I don't want it to be in that kind of disposable shopping way. I had this like anxiety attack one time when I watched Zoella do like her seasonal declutter of her closet. She brought her assistant over. I think she might've taken the video down because it was intolerable. It was, you know, them going through just like a department store worth of clothing she had bought over the last like two seasons or something and just donating it all and they were like yeah you know we're doing the right thing we're donating this to people in need blah blah I'm like no human should buy that many clothes you are contributing to the waste of the world like that is just so ah so even if I were to buy something inexpensive because I do think that it obviously is more expensive to buy things that are made in the US I would still want it to be something that I was going to wear for a long time I guess it's hard to care about everything and nobody's perfect but I've been doing a little bit of research and trying to look into, you know, companies that kind of split the difference in terms of what I can afford and also being a lot more conscious. And the scene kid in me, the tomboy in me fell in love with, this is, this is so weird. This is so random. Um, this, you guys have probably seen me wearing this in a lot of videos. It's like hard to tell you like how special this is. This is obviously like one of my favorite colors is just any kind of golden rod shade of anything. This is from a company called Young Maven and they make hemp clothing. And some of them are 100% hemp. Some of them are like a hemp cotton blend. They're all made in America. They're all like, you know, cut by hand, whatever. Fair wages and everything. And for that reason, this sweatshirt cost me a hundred dollars. Yeah, that's a reality check of what it actually costs to pay somebody the right amount of money to make a garment and for it to be made out of responsibly sourced materials. Like it's just, it's an adjustment and they don't make, you know, an entire wardrobe's worth of stuff, at least not as far as I'm concerned. But I have ordered a couple of more things that will be coming from them soon. Just some t-shirts and stuff because I do like to have just some really nice knock around stuff. And I get really frustrated when I shop at like Everlane, for example, because their stuff is so flimsy that, you know, their t-shirts and stuff, they just, I don't know, people think that they like stand up really well. I disagree. I like things to have a little bit more structure on their own than that. And they're just very tissuey. They still feel like a forever 21 shirt to me, no shade, but it's just not what I'm looking for when I want to buy like a t-shirt I'm going to wear for years kind of thing. 
And so this is raglan cut, which is like the perfect boy cut. I got this in the size uh, small, and I feel like it's per, I'm five foot eight, five, seven and three quarters, something like that. The, I can't even tell you guys. It is the most perfectly cut sweatshirt ever. Like if you're the kind of person who is always shopping vintage stores and you always want that like cool 70s cut of like the perfect effortless sweatshirt. I get so many compliments when I wear this sweatshirt. People are like, it's a really good shirt. It's like, dude, yeah, it's worth every penny. And it's this really fantastic weight because it is made with hemp. And so it has this hang on your body that's got a lot more weight to it than like a regular just like you know crappy cotton sweatshirt that you would buy at like the you know sports store or something or like Target and it has this durability and it washes really well it doesn't shrink weird and so you can throw it in you know throw it in the wash throw it in the dryer it's just a perfect knockout you don't have to take extra care of it but it behaves so much more beautifully and it's it's just weird to give a crap about a sweatshirt, but it's the best sweatshirt I've ever owned. It's worth every penny of my hundred dollars. And I understand that that's luxury, you guys. I do, I get it. But like I said, it's just this brain adjustment of saying, wow, this is how much it costs to get something that's actually responsibly sourced and responsibly uh, manufactured. It's a big brain F, if you know what I mean. Ready for peak weirdness? Actually, this isn't that weird. Most of you guys are gonna be like, yeah, I can totally relate to that. So if you, <laughs> watched Saturday's video or you have been following me on Instagram at all you know, like I said, I've been kind of suffering with some seasonal depression and I just have to find a way to get by right now until the sun starts coming out. And I wanted to thank Sarah Davis from Living Whole. She's one of my, you know, influencer friends on Instagram. She watched my channel. I was in like the throes of horrible depression again a couple of months ago and she sent me a link on Amazon to this. This is a happy light. <laughs> and I was pretty unfamiliar with this idea because I'm from Florida <laughs> and I live in Texas and most people consider our winter to be so short that they think that we're wimps when we complain about it being gray and cold for a while. Hallie even said to me, she's like, yeah, it's cold for like 12 days there, right? And I'm like, long enough for me to get mortally depressed. I bought this, I think it was like 40 bucks on Amazon and I'm not the biggest fan of this shape, although it is super portable. I think I would probably rather have something that just like sat there and shined at me. Shown? I don't have the plug here because it would blow out my white balance if I turned this on. It is so bright. You open this up, it's got three settings when you touch this and it plugs into the wall. And it actually has a, a hanger right here and then it also can do that to like sit on your table, which is also cool, but it's still kind of top heavy and a little bit precarious. But the whole idea is that you're supposed to kind of get this through indirect light. So this is supposed to enter your eyes, but you're not supposed to look directly at this because it's crazy bright. And so I have either had it like sitting like this, I can't, that's not showing you anything, sitting like this on the table, but I think that my favorite way to do it actually is to have it sit on the floor like this, kind of next to my bed, and it shines up. And I will sit in the morning and it doesn't really disturb Mike because it just feels, because I have a window next to my bed too. And so it feels like natural light coming through the window even if the sun didn't come up, which it hasn't in a really long time. I will sit there and I will have my copy and I will have, I will do my crossword puzzle. I do the New York Times crossword puzzle every morning. Um, in case there was any doubt that I'm a huge nerd. Actually, you guys, I don't know whether it's psychosomatic. It probably isn't. But as soon as I turn this on, I like feel relieved. <laughs> I feel like there's, there's hope. <laughs> there's literally light at the end of the tunnel when I turn this on. I'm like, oh yeah, I remember the feeling of bright natural light. Oh my God. And like, I know that there are positive habits in our lives that are supposed to keep us even keeled no matter what. But guys, there's just only so much that self-care can do. There's only so much that positive self-talk can do when every day you wake up and you just feel hopeless. I know now from enough experience that it's gonna pass and it has a lot to do with a ton of factors all kind of colluding or not colluding with me but sometimes you just get so buried in it that everything becomes this hole. And the thought of starting to dig your way out of that hole sounds harder than anything you've ever done. And 
something small like this can give you the like little bit of willpower to start clawing your way out for that day. I asked Mike yesterday, you guys, this is dark. <laughs> This is me. I asked him, I said, what's the first thing you think of when you wake up and you open your eyes in the morning? And he said, I'm glad to be alive. He's so enlightened. I don't understand. He's like this born Taoist. He's like never been truly stressed out about anything in his life. And he's like, I'm happy to be alive. And I'm like, where do you get this unearned gratitude from? Like, I don't understand. And he's like, why? What do you think? When you open your eyes first thing in the morning, I, I said, I'm scared. And he goes, what? what? And I said, I open my eyes and I feel fear. And he's like, why? I said, I'm scared that there's nothing good. I'm scared that there's no point. I'm scared that I am worthless. I'm scared that I won't make a difference. I'm just scared that it's never going to get better. And that's how I feel when I'm depressed. And I'm sure that that is relatable. Again, if there's anything that I've learned throughout my life and through having this channel is that every time I feel like I'm having a, an emotion that no one else has ever felt <laughs> that I'm not unique and that even though it is the worst feeling I've ever felt I'm not alone and I want you guys to know that you're not alone either and that something that costs $40 that you can integrate into your morning routine or whatever routine that you have during the day even if like you're working from home y'all if I work from home I'm turning this bad boy on all day I just want to drink it in and knowing that there is just one little shred of help <laughs> that can make me feel good enough to get out of bed. That's miraculous to me. All right, we have, what, two more things here? Oh, three more, because one of them is intangible and I will save it for last. So the first one is this book right here. This is Calypso by David Sedaris. I've read every other book that David Sedaris has ever written. I am a huge fan of his. He is the only author who makes me laugh out loud while reading a book. I think that he is a genius. I think that he is so fantastic and wonderful. And if I had to pick the one that I like the most so far, because I'm not done with this book, I just want to let you guys know about halfway through. It is the story called The Perfect Fit. It is about him and his sisters clothing shopping in their like 50s and 60s in Japan. And it is so funny. His turn of phrase is so funny. So if you don't know David Sedaris, he writes memoirs. He was made famous initially when uh, This American Life featured his short story, The Santa Land Diaries, and it became, you know, a touring stage production. In his early books, he makes his meth addiction like tears streaming down your face hilarious. Like that's a talent in and of itself. But now he's old and he's like you know older than my parents and he can make being this old dude who just enjoys like counting steps on his fitness tracker crying down your face funny i don't understand it and so um i this just brings so much brightness to my life it makes me want to go back and read his other books again um also if you haven't read me talk pretty one day that is, I think that the best one in that one, if I'm not mistaken, is called uh, You Can't Kill the Rooster. So funny. And honestly, it's super worth it to have a recording of him reading it. Just any chance you get to listen to him read his own writing is priceless. So yeah, loving this if you need a good laugh. All right. And then you guys, I got inspired recently. This is so random. I know random is the word of the day. But I bought a vintage point and shoot camera. I got this on eBay for $40. And my mother was such a, an avid photographer when I was growing up. And there's just something about shooting on film that brings me this kind of like rebellious analog joy. I feel like we, I'm not gonna like harp on being a millennial here and get all nostalgic about like, you know, pre-internet days or something, but I do feel like there's just something that gets lost when everybody's face tuning everything. I'll be honest, I don't even have face tune on my phone. I don't know how to do it. I had it for a while when I was using it to like whiten backgrounds on my Instagram. And then I realized I didn't care. <laughs> I just can't care enough for that kind of stuff. And I recently actually was inspired by uh, some younger YouTubers, mainly Ava Gutowski. She's been shooting on a point and shoot when she travels and she does beautiful cinematic videos. These vlogs that are just absolutely gorgeous. She's an extremely gifted cinematographer for being a self-taught YouTuber. Like her stuff's amazing. She also takes a, like an old Olympus point and shoot with her and takes, you know, semi blurry photos sometimes, but they're, they're really cool. And they're really, 
just nostalgic for me because I'm not 24. This isn't the way Polaroids were for me where I was just like, wow, this is from the 80s. No, shooting on film was the only thing that you could do for most of my childhood. And so my mother being, you know, having just albums and albums and albums and albums full of photos of me as a kid. And of course I hated it at the time because I was just like, oh, that's an awkward phase and that's an even more awkward phase. And wow, I will never forget that zit now. Thanks mom. Um, I really like that Mandy Moore phase I was going through. There is just something about getting prints of photos and we don't have any photos around our house. And I just, I want to do that. And I'm kind of thinking about maybe getting a scanner too so that I can put them like on Instagram and just go full analog. I don't know. I'm, I'm just in a rebellious mood right now, but I thought that that sounded fun. Oh, and so also this is the, uh, the Canon Sure Shot with autofocus. I wanted to make sure I had autofocus. It's got a flash and stuff like that. It's pretty chill. I just did a little bit of research. That's kind of what I do on the internet as I just do a little bit of research. I'm just kind of like, what's the best point in shooting movies? It's like I get on one article and then I just scroll down until I see a Canon because I'm just a, I, I'm not a, I'm not an icon person. I'm just not an icon person. I'm a Canon person. I just scrolled down long enough until I found an eBay link to a $40 camera. It's in great shape. Thank you to Gregory or whoever I bought this from on eBay. And I can't wait to try it. All right, and the final thing you guys, <laughs> is probably the fail of the month, okay? Even though it's only the beginning of March, this is still the fail of my month. Guys, um, Umbrella Academy? Mike and I were so excited because he really likes superheroes. And not the Marvel Comics superheroes necessarily. Like, I feel like all that stuff is very unmemorable. I literally, it's just this blur of franchise to me. But Umbrella Academy looked like it was gonna be so cool. You know, it's very pulpy. It's based on like a comic book series, which I'll get to in a second. We start watching it, you guys, and I love the concept. The writing is pretty bad. The acting is abysmal. Not on everybody though. Like the kid who plays five, he is acting circles around everybody. And I will say Mary J. Blige is not a bad actress. She has a bad script in that show. It's so choppy. I really feel like it was lifted directly from the pages of the comic book and no one watched back through it and was like, that's not how humans talk to each other. And I feel like she's having trouble making the lines sound human because they're not written very well. And the main people that I cannot stand are Luther and Allison. Luther and Allison. So Luther, that man is not bad on the eyes. I will give him that and neither is she. You guys, as I'm like looking for a photo of this actor, I realize why he looks so familiar to me. He is Dick on Tarly. <laughs> name supposed to be funny uh, from Game of Thrones where he won't bend the knee for Daenerys and he just gets like incinerated. So if any of you guys were watching the show and you were like, who is that? That's who that is. By the way, it's like all these kids were born on the same day. There were like 40 something of them and uh, this weird eccentric billionaire like adopted seven of them and he trained them all to be superheroes. So anyway, I put it to Mike like this. I believe the kid playing number five as a 58 year old man living in a 13 year old's body. I don't even believe Allison as a human. <laughs> she delivers her lines so poorly and everything that she does is so overacted. It's so, super cringy and Luther's just as bad and his character is written so, I mean, I get it. In a comic book, it would be fine, but he has this like two dimensional kind of persona where he was sent to the moon by his father it's okay, you know, like we're supposed to suspend our disbelief and I'm probably supposed to be 16 watching this, not 32, but still, it's just really, really, really cringy in a lot of ways. And then I found out why. <laughs> Come to find out in all of its two dimensionality, no pun intended, and hot topic, like Tim Burton light kind of thing that it has going on, uh, the person who wrote it is the lead singer of My Chemical Romance, which if you know me and you know what a pretentious music prick I was when I was growing up, like My Chemical Romance is, it's like, you know, like it, it burns. I was just su such a pretentious kid about bands selling out and they were like this sellout emo band from the very beginning. And there was just something about them that like, if you were to ever admit that you liked their music, plus they were a little bit later than my time. And so I was able to just be super cynical about it when I was in college. And so like my chemical romance, everybody was just like, that is so lame. <laughs> and finding this, this new information out while we're watching the show, Mike is on the other side of the couch for me. And I look at my phone and I go, 
oh my god. He goes, I thought something was like really wrong. I cannot express to you how devastated you were <laughs> when you found out that we were seven episodes in to something that was written by the lead singer of My Chemical Romance. And I was just like, it's against everything that my 16 year old pretentious little emo self ever stood for. All right guys, so I hope that you enjoyed this like incredibly, we're gonna say it one more time, random video. Like that was just a lot of completely all over the place smattering of, of crap. And I hope that you enjoyed it. Uh, if you did, give it a thumbs up. If you wanna keep hanging out with me on this channel, guys, hit the button down below and subscribe. I would love it if you did. Thank you so much for joining me today. I am so happy to have you guys in my life. You really are such a bright spot. So I love you very much. Thank you for watching. And I will see you guys in the next time.